Yo, what's up guys, Marty here with another video. Um, so we are back with a Slay the Spire deck building video. So I promised to make more of these a while ago um, and I kind of got a little sidetracked. I was playing a lot of Raft on stream and I made a lot of Raft videos and I, yeah, I just, yeah, I kind of put this on the back burner for a while, but yeah, here we are with another deck building. Um, so last time we did a silent one um, and I don't think my thoughts on that have changed, but at the time I wasn't really playing much defect. I've been playing a ton more lately um, and my opinion of it's changed quite a lot. So I wanted to come out with a um, with a deck building for the defect, uh, my opinion on the top builds that are going to give you a higher chance of winning at those higher ascensions and tackling some of the tougher bosses. If you don't follow the channel or the streams, I've got around 300 plus hours in Slay the Spire. Um, I've been playing it since release. I'm in no way a pro and I don't claim to, uh, to be, you know, above average. Um, but I do have a lot of experience and I've played pretty much every deck at high ascensions. So I feel pretty comfortable discussing this. However, these are my opinions and I'm happy to debate them in the comments if anyone feels different um, or you think I've missed anything or you know you think I'm wrong on any of these points. Maybe I am, yeah, let me know. Um, so with that out of the way, the defect. This is a class, yeah, I couldn't get into it for a long time. And the main reason is because I was building bad decks. Um, this is a completely different class to the other three. Um, and if you're not tailoring it in the right way, it's going to be underpowered. Um, so again, I just want to mention as well, try not to start the game with a deck in mind, um, but think that the best decks are what they are. Keep that in the back of your mind and then tailor from what you get in the early game. So you'll get signals in the early game of what to go for. If you get a good relic or a good rare card, try and link that to a good build and then build your build out from there um, to the best you can. I mean, it is a random game, so you're not always going to get that. But generally, if you can get a good item early, you can tailor down that road. Uh, so I'm going to go through my top three decks and then I'm going to touch on a couple of like honorable mentions that I think work well, but personally, I don't find as strong. So number one on this list is the Frost build. Um, what you see behind you is a Frost build at Ascension 10, I think. So it should be pretty hard, but I pretty much steamrolled every boss in this game. Um, I finished the game with the Lizard's Tail, which um, revives you and didn't really struggle. Um, this, is, in my opinion, is one of the stronger builds. Um, some bosses will wreck you, um, so do keep that in mind. But generally, you won't have much trouble if you get this build right. Um, I'm putting this one first because it's probably the easiest to make because of the card choices you'll get offered. Um, you don't need any like, really niche things to get this one going. Um, <clears throat> so you want to keep up a shield as much as possible and you only attack once you've blocked all the damage. So hopefully some of the work will come from like passives of your orbs, but, but basically you just take shots when you can um, and build up your shields to keep blocking. So I've put together a bunch of cards on Spire Spy to show you the kind of cards I'd want to be putting in my deck. Um, the big ones here for generating frost are Glacier and Cold Snap. So Glacier will give you um, a shield and it will um, block and then Cold Snap will kind of replace your strikes and give you a shield. Um, you could also use Cool Headed, which gives you Frost and um, draws cards, but I personally don't like it. Um, I always try and add a single chill as well. Uh, if you come up against a large group, it's nice to have a chill. Uh, some groups will hit so hard on turn one. Um, so if you've got like a group of five and you play chill, you'll fill your shield, you'll fill your slots with, um, with Frosts and then you'll get a few extras because they'll cycle. Um, so yeah, I, it's not... I wouldn't say it's like one of the best ones for this, but I always try and find one just in case. It's very situational, but it will save you the game if, if you've got it. Um, and then going through them, Blizzard is probably the main card in this deck. Um, I love Glacier, but Blizzard is probably the one that makes this work the best. Um, in some of the some of the matches where you need to ramp up your damage to match the enemy or timed matches where like you need to kill them fast, Blizzard will scale super fast. If you're focusing on playing as many frost cards as possible and cycling your frost as much as possible, Blizzard will be crazy. So let's say you block for like the first three or four rounds. After that, if you start using Blizzard, it costs one um, and you can be doing like, I think on, on one of these matches, I do like 50 per Blizzard to all enemies, um, which is crazy for, for a one cost card that's reusable as well. Um, and then two big ones here, Capacitor gives you more orb slots, uh, which is really important because more orb slots, more frost, more passive damage. Um, and then as well, Defragment makes those even better. So I'd always try and get Defragment, always try and upgrade it. That's my opinion. Um, 
I put charge battery in here as well, just because sometimes it's nice to have just that little extra shield, especially in the early game, um, and you're kind of not using your energy. Or if you've fully blocked everything and don't have any attacks, use a charge battery, and then you'll get your extra energy next turn when you might need it. Um, good on some bosses that are um, that kind of take turns between big big damages and then no damage. Um, I also like taking a loop. So you can see in the background, I think I had like three loops. So at the start of each turn, you're instantly gaining like 24 armor, um, which, yeah, which is mad. Uh, then for relics, I'd look at replacing the cracked core with the frozen core, as this gives you more frost. Um, if you're trying to increase your open slots as well, frozen core will keep working for you all the way through. So it's not just like it, it will fill them in the first couple of rounds. If you can keep increasing your slots, that'll keep increasing them. Um, runic capacitor. An inserter, more orb slots, as I've said, that's huge for this deck. Um, and then some extra ones, like some weird ones. Scales, it's not great, but while you're shielding to put out three damage, again, if, if you've got like a big group of little monsters, or if you've got like a, mon a, a boss that summons little ads, just pop in three damage on them every single turn. It, it does add up. Um, calipers help as well, stop you losing so much block. Um, there's a ton of other cards and relics out there which work um, and help on certain bosses, but these are the ones I always look for and I always take no matter what. Uh, like I say, depending what kind of a run you're trying to do and what kind of bosses you're going to face, there are going to be certain cards that work well and there are other little niche combos that work in the Frost build, um, but these are like the base. These are the ones I always look for and always take. So next up, this deck has a ton of volatility. Um, I've had runs where I've lost the first boss because I didn't have the cards I needed. Um, then on the flip side, I've completely melted final bosses with no effort because I got the perfect deck. And that is the zero cost build, um, also called the claw build. Um, I'll bring the audio cards, cards up again for this. Um, ignore dual cast, I'm not sure why that one's there. Um, the big ones here are the first ones, scrape and claw. These are gonna be your two priority cards. So claw deals seven damage and increases the damage of the next claw. So the more you play, the stronger they get. So you want to be cycling as many of these as possible into your hand and playing them. And because they're zero, you want to be playing them again and again and again. And playing them, yeah, as much as physically possible. Scrape draws three cards. Upgraded, this draws five cards, and it discards any that aren't zero cost. So if you've got a small hand, like if you can get your hand down a lot, like by removing loads of cards, this can be crazy. Um, on the counter, if you can't, try and get as many good zero cost cards. So you're drawing more zero costs than actual modern zero cost. Um, so cards like FTL and Reboot um, and Void, they're zero costs, so they're kept with Scrape and they can draw more claws. Um, these costs, I just mentioned a priority in my opinion. Uh, they're your main cards. The rest are just like an added touch that are nice to get. Um, all in one is, is really, really good, but the cost is kind of high. Um, a two cost card is kind of high and if you're keeping your deck small to cycle drawing a big discard pile isn't really a thing because you shouldn't really have much in your discard pile um, however if you can't if you can't get the if you can't get the hand size down uh, the deck size down and you are trying to fill the deck with as many zeros as possible because of that drawing your discard pile is really good so yeah use this one as you need it um, the rest are just good zero cost cards to try and fill your deck with um, go for the eyes and beam cell, just free cards that make the fight easier. Um, streamline, it says it costs two, but this gets reduced each turn. So after two plays, it's a zero cost card and it, it's a great card to have a zero cost, right? Especially if you're drawing it with scrape. Um, and there's tons of cards that work well in this deck, but as a base, I say these are the ones that, that make it work and these are the ones I'd always take. Um, and to be honest with this one, less is more. So don't, I don't need to give you 50 great cards here because if you can put three great cards in and have them every single turn, do that, right? Um, and then onto the relics. Gremlin Horn keeps the battle going if you've got multiple enemies. Um, it's really It really ramps you up if you if you can knock out an enemy and then just keep going. Um, cards that draw as well. Any sort of relic that draws you stuff is also good to have. Um, and then I just kind of stuck together a bunch of, like, you won't get all these, but I've tried to just bunch together a group of cards that work, a group of relics that work really well. So Kunai, Shrukan, the Ornamental Fan, the Letter Opener, they all just have reactions when you play a lot of cards. So yeah, play a lot of cards. Things like the Pen Nib as well, things like that, that react when you play a lot of cards. Try and find those. Um, 
there's more than what I've shown here. There's, there's quite a lot of things that do that. Um, you're going to be playing a lot of cards, so get relics that that benefit that. Um, the same can be said for nunchucks, right? So, yeah, the relics. I'm not going to give you a big list of relics, but if it says the more you do something, get this, take it. If it draws you cards, take it. Other than that, you, a big thing here: you're not going to be using your orbs that much. Um, you know, just fill your orb slots and then don't really worry about your orbs. Um, so try and avoid the relics that benefit orbs. Um, other than that, that's kind of the zero cost deck. It is really simple because you don't put much in your deck and you just try and speed run through as fast as possible. Um, hopefully this makes sense. I find it quite a hard deck to build. Um, if anyone has any comments on this, on things that they think I've missed or ways to make this deck build easier let me know in the comments because i would like to improve on this next up is probably the most fun deck that you're going to be building as the defect it's also a rather hard one um, compared to say frost or like an electric build this is quite a hard one to build it's um you can really get caught with this and you can you can die a lot with this if you don't build it well um, but again really fun if you get it working and really strong at the end game and that's the powers build the big one here that i say there's two core cards here that will uh, take this from a pretty good build to a crazy build and that's um creative ai um so at the start of each turn add a random power card to your hand that that's mad that just if you can't find the powers that that does it for you um this this drops from bosses it, it drops a lot from the first boss for me recently um i don't know i don't know the stats on it but yeah huge card and then echo form is the other one that turns this from you know a so-so build to a crazy build um the first card you play each turn is played twice um if you then play powers each turn yeah it, it's bizarre um some of the good powers that you want to be taking things like the fragment and capacitator will um i mean they're always good they make your orbs stronger and you get more orbs things like self-repair will keep you alive longer and let you take more damage so you can be more risky um amplify kind of like echo form um doubles the power that you play incredible um force field works well in this deck costs one less energy for each power card you've played if you're playing a lot of power cards which yeah you will be you're getting a free 12 block really um buffer is crazy on the final boss and on the additional boss you know the one that you have to get the three keys to get to um that's not a spoiler i guess maybe it is it's not um but yeah buffer is just crazy someone's going to deal 100 damage to you just negate it with buffer fine <laughs> great um and then two that work really well um i've kept them at the back but they're, they're, they're actually really good storm storm is phenomenal whenever you play a power card channel one lightning get a few of these start playing your power cards and it feels like when you play a power card you're not actually wasting a turn because you're still dealing damage um and then something like static discharge as well it's quite situational um whenever you take damage channel one lightning but it's phenomenal one of the best interactions i've had with this is you know those birds that like fly around and they deal like um six times one so they hit you six times for one <laughs> every time they hit you you channel one lightning but that round is over on the first turn <laughs> so yeah this is kind of the powers build um there's a lot of cards a lot of powers that work well um there's a lot that don't work so well as well so be careful um these are my favorites plenty more to try but try and build a core of these um i've kind of showed you the ones that you want that are kind of priority as well so yeah have a go with this let me know what cards you've seen in this deck that work well as well because I've not tried everything for this deck. I've only tried I kind of I kind of got a comfort zone for the power build. And I um I go for the same ones every time. But if you found something that works really well or a really good combo, yeah, let me know. Um and then onto the relics for the power build. Um the big one here is mummified hand. So whenever you play a power, a random card in your hand goes to zero. Getting out things like echo, um, things like creative AI, you know, you play you play like a one cost power you get a three cost power for zero phenomenal um frozen egg whenever you add a power it becomes zero inserters are always good um you got bottled tornado so you can pick to put a, a power card um into your hand really good um 
nuclear battery, you're going to need a lot of energy for this match. So um, nuclear, for, the, for, the, for this deck, you're going to need a lot of energy because there's some high cost cards. So having that plasma really does help. Um, and then I've put the book here. It's kind of hard to get, but if you can get it, the run will be incredible. It would be incredible. Yeah. If you've got if you've if you've got a video of using this, I'd love to see it. Um, I've had it once, but I died. Uh, if, you, if you've used this book and you've had a really good run, yeah, let me know. I'd love to see a video of it. And then yeah, on some honourable mentions, the lightning builds. Personally, I don't I don't like them. Um, I think lightning is good. It's really good. It, it ramps up really really fast. Uh, the damage is crazy. When you fight trash and when you fight like elites, you're going to feel like a god because you just can do so much damage. Um, but I always get caught caught without enough defense against the bosses so you know I'm not a fan um, I've seen the dark builds before again not a fan of those um, I saw a video of someone trying this thing called the 10 card infinite which is about like getting as much energy as possible and then playing cards like uh, meteor strike again personally <laughs> I won't be trying it uh, it seems kind of crazy but yeah there's plenty of other fun fun things you can try as a defect he's a really cool class and he's got he's got very unique play style and and yeah, let me know in the comments if you found something that works well with him. If there's like a killer build that you have pushed all the way to, you know, Ascension 20. Yeah, let me know. Um, but other than that, guys, I hope this video has helped um, structure the kind of decks that I go for, um, my thoughts and opinions, what's worked for me, um, and then kind of opened up, the, opened up the discussion of what's worked for other people. I'd love to create a platform where more people can contribute to this and we can kind of... You know, maybe you can criticize me and you know improve one of the one of the builds I've shown here. Um, but yeah, I'm all, I'm all up for that. Um, other than that, I'm probably going to end the video here. I think it's it's gone quite long. Um, if this video has helped, if you've enjoyed the video, um, liking shows the video to more people and helps with the algorithm, and I would really appreciate it. Um, if you like Slay the Spy content, subscribing helps me out a ton and will deliver you more of my content straight to you as it's as it's created um but yeah other than that guys thanks so much for watching the video and i'll catch you in the next one bye